In this video, we create a virtual Chromebook and emulate other Google devices. Hello everyone and welcome to TechFix Flicks. Whilst we're curious about the Chromebook experience, we don't necessarily want to commit cash without first giving it a try. As our usual method of creating a VirtualBox virtual machine isn't an option this time, we'll look to subvert Android Studio for this purpose, with the additional bonus of being able to emulate other Google hardware, including phones and tablets. We begin by heading to the link shown on screen now, and in the written description accompanying this video. We click the large download button to begin. Note that this is a moderately sized file, and may take a little while over slower connections. Acceptance of the mandatory terms and conditions is a prerequisite for download, and we indicate our consent by ticking the relevant box. Once ticked, the download button illuminates, and we click it to begin the download. Once concluded, we click to run, and where user account control interjects, we click yes to provide consent. The setup dialog appears, and we click next to progress beyond the introductory screen. We can then choose to add a single optional component, and whilst the Android Virtual Device adds considerable size to the download, it's recommended, and we include it in our installation. We click Next, and novice users can again click Next at the following screen, to accept the default installation path. We click Browse in order to enter a custom installation path, and with our custom installation path entered, we too click Next to continue with the installation. We accept the default start menu customizations, and clicking install begins the installation process. Once completed, we again click next. With start Android Studio ticked by default, we click finish to conclude the installation, and launch setup. As this is our first run of the software, we have no settings to import, and therefore click OK, launching the splash screen. We are presented with a query in relation to sending usage statistics to Google, and as there's no advantage for us in doing so, we click Don't Send. A further phase of downloading follows, before we arrive at the welcome screen, where we click Next. We can then choose between Standard and Custom Installation, and as always, we opt for Custom Installation, then click Next. We can then select our preferred user interface theme, with the default being Light. The alternative is the wonderfully named Darkula. As we prefer the light side, we'll make the appropriate selection. We're heading toward a further download, and here we see detail of the compulsory components which will be included. Additional optional components can also be included at this stage, and after making our selections, we again click Next. We can now allocate our RAM. As in our VirtualBox tutorials, we recommend ensuring that sufficient RAM is kept to maintain the normal function of the host PC, and therefore use the recommended RAM, clicking Next to advance. We now see a summary of our selections, and scrolling down, clicking Finish will begin the downloading and unzipping process. This can be quite lengthy, and offers the opportunity to take a break. Once concluded, the process is summarised, and we have been successful. We therefore click Finish, and are taken to the home screen. We click Configure. From the menu which appears, we select SDK Manager. In the dialog box, we select the tab labelled SDK Update Sites, and within, we click the Add icon in the upper right. A further dialog box appears. The content of the name field is entirely arbitrary, and we opt for Chrome OS. In the URL field, we enter the link shown on screen now, and in the written description accompanying this video. We click OK, then select Add a second time. Once again, the content of the name field is entirely optional, and we add the label System Images. For a second time, we complete the URL field using the link shown on screen now, and in the written description. We now see our tools added to the list. We click Apply, then head to the SDK Tools tab. Here we tick Chrome OS Device, then click OK. We receive notification of components to be installed and disk usage, and clicking OK takes us to the License Agreement screen, where Acceptance is mandatory and indicated by ticking Accept before clicking Next. The installation begins, and we click Finish on Completion. We are returned to the main interface, where we click Start a new Android Studio project. In the Phone and Tablet section, with Add No Activity selected, we click Next. At the Configure Your Project screen, we change our project name to Chrome OS, then click Finish. The project screen opens in a somewhat chaotic manner, with new plugin information, syncing activity, and Windows Defender firewall interjections. To restore some order, we click Allow Access, then install the plugin. Once the plugin has downloaded, we restart to activate. You may wish to wait for background processes to complete, and you'll receive notice if they're still running as you attempt to exit. 
Once the restart concludes, we are met with tips shown at startup, and these can be suppressed for future runs. Clicking close allows us to proceed on this occasion. Our main window is now less cluttered. We click the small Android icon to run AVD Manager. The list of devices is shown, and we click Create Virtual Device. A list of hardware profiles is shown, and we'll return to this toward the conclusion of the tutorial. We select the tablet profiles, and a selection of virtual tablets are shown. We select Pixelbook Beta. To progress requires a further download, this time of a system image. We therefore click the download link, where we find another license agreement, ticking accept before clicking next. A download of the requested components follows, and those components are unzipped, again affording the opportunity of another break. Upon completion, we click finish. With the system image downloaded, we are ready to proceed, and click next. We are presented with an AVD summary screen, at which we click finish. In order to provide the best possible demonstration of the next phase, note that we've changed host machine and screen resolution at this juncture. We've now added Pixelbook as an available virtual device, and we click to run. We have now entered our Android virtual machine, and from here onward, we interact as though using the physical machine equivalent, starting with the setup screen, at which we click Let's Go. As normal, we begin with language and keyboard selection, and we modify these options to reflect our preference for UK English. Next, we connect to a network, and select Ethernet. We click Next, and are taken to the Terms and Conditions screen, where we click Accept and Continue. A check for updates is performed, and we can then sign in to the virtual Chromebook, or bypass sign in should we so wish. We opt to browse as a guest. A small selection of apps is also provided, although fully expanding reveals the limited nature of the selection. The main feature of the virtual Chromebook is its functional web browser. Whilst the scope of the virtual Chromebook is limited, as a bonus, Android Studio offers the ability to emulate other phones, tablets, and watches, as well as Android TV. Here's a list of the emulated phones. Naturally, they are native Google models. Also included are Wear OS devices and tablets. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing by clicking the logo on screen now. If you'd like to see more, there are two suggestions currently on screen. If you have a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're also welcome to follow us on Twitter. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.